Welcome to the file submission redesign training. This is going to be a high level overview of the system upgrade, and then we will speak to the workflow changes that are impacted by the upgrade. This training is intended for anybody that uses CalPads. So if they upload files, they're going to want to watch this. If they obtain SSIDs, they're going to want to be familiar with those changes as well as the mid process. This slide real quick, we usually use in our training just to orientate users to where you are with all of the training material that we have. And the um, file submission is part of the basics functionality of CalPads, and that's where it fits into all of the training. So our goal is that you're going to be able to identify all of the changes in the file submission project, and you're going to understand how that's going to impact you locally and get ready for that change. We want you with this information to be able to coordinate with others in your organization and recognize that some local practices are going to have to change and you're going to be able to go and work with your agency um, so that you can be successful in uploading files. So I talked a little bit about what was on the agenda. So we're first going to start with the workflow and this big system changes, and then we'll do file submission features. Then we'll talk a little bit more of some other um, changes in the system. And then we'll do a quick wrap up of the overview. So as you know, CalPads is a little over 10 years old, and it has changed quite a bit from the very beginning. Um, as far as uh, we keep adding more and more <laughs> to CalPads, and we didn't do a whole lot to address the underlying technology when it comes to the intake of files. And so this file redesign uh, project is really geared towards addressing that aspect of the system. And I think you guys can all relate to some of the things that motivated us to redesign the system that we knew that the system has been very slow for some time now. Uh, it was slow on the uploads because that's where a lot of the validations happen. It was slow in the posting because that was a single queue that we also had restrictions on that. You had to do the file uploads in a certain order and that kind of slowed people down. Additionally, when you did upload a file, uh, it was like the validations were very sequential. So as soon as it hit one error, potentially it would stop and then you had to fix it and upload again. And then you'd see, oh, you have more errors. Also uh, a limitation of the way we brought data into CalPads when it came time for our submissions that the certification validations were only present when we were in a submission window. Um, and so we're trying to address that also in this uh, redesign because we have a feature to look at the data in the ODS prior to a submission. And another reason for redesigning the system because we saw how hard it was on the LEAs that uh, oftentimes people were uh, adjusting their working hours, working in the weekends, relying a lot on online maintenance, which we don't like you to do because we want the data to be in the source system and it should be extracted from your local system into CalPads. Those were some of our, the motivations. So CalPads enhancements. So the system's been modified, like I mentioned, for that intake. So we want to get the data into CalPads a little bit faster. So in order to do that, we evaluated what are the key validations that have to happen on that uh, input. So we've uh, minimized those validations to the real necessary ones. And it has to do with the structure, like the, the layout of the file, or the, you know, is the right amount of fields in there? Um, are you using the standard code sets and not making up things? But when it comes to comparing data of what's coming into the ODS, those we have delayed and we'll run them later. And so one of the changes then with this file redesign is that there's going to be this philosophy of if one of your records fail, the whole job is going to fail. And so we no longer have partial posts um, because if your uh, records in the file pass all of those initial validations, it's going to post automatically. So that's the big shift uh, in this file redesign. And I think you've heard of this already. Brandy shared this out in the quarterly meetings, as well as the county offices, and most of you guys attend those things. So this is not new to you, but this is the 
change in the file submission process. But along the way, then we had to address what happens with the SSID request. And so uh, another big change is that it will do a minimal amount of matching. And that's when your local ID and a blank SSID comes in through the SENR. If we can find that local ID with an SSID for your LEA already in the ODS, we will match. But if your local ID and your LEA, um, we don't find one, then the big change is CalPads is going to automatically assign a new SSID to any record that comes in that's blank, except for that unique scenario that I mentioned. So that's going to be a big change. In knowing that we're issuing new SSIDs, and we know that the student probably has one already, especially if they're transfers, we're going to utilize the mid detection to identify if the student does indeed have an ID already in the system. So we're not going to just allow you to have a brand new, we are going to report back to you when we find those mid anomalies. And so MIDS anomaly, we had to change the schedule because we want to be able to give you immediate feedback that, oh, you have a student now that has a new SSID, but with the MID detection, we were able to see that they already had one. Um, and so we're going to run that process in a real-time uh, fashion, and we'll talk more about that later. So the enhancement was to get the data in faster because that's where the bottleneck was and that's where all of the slowness came from. So we're going to get the data in faster and then we're going to check for quality in the ODS after uh, it gets posted. And so we're going to add a new feature called data discrepancies. And so after you post a files, data discrepancies will run and those additional validations that we didn't do on input, we're going to do after the fact. So with those enhancements, it pretty much comes down to these areas that are going to be changed. So the file submission process, and we're going to walk you through that. That's a key thing that changed. The SSID request process has changed. The min anomaly resolution has changed. It's going to run more often. Uh, online maintenance also has a change to it. And then we added a new piece of functionality, the data discrepancies. So this is the way it kind of looked before. I mean, you could argue and we could get really uh, sophisticated with this workflow, but basically the big difference is, you know, that if you had um, rejected records, we would still allow you to post that file. We considered that like a partial post or it would post all of the things that passed. And so that's no longer going to be the way the system will operate. But you can see here that how if you had the partial post and then you could see ODS and snapshots, et cetera. And then you had the side activity, the SSID matching, et cetera. This is the new workflow. So this top box up here, files are coming in. Uh, you extract them out of your SIS. You uh, upload them into the system. And if there's any record rejection, the whole file rejects, and then you got to go back to the system, fix it. But if you get in here and your file uploads and there's no errors and it passes all of those input validations, we'll generate new SSIDs and then we will post that to the ODS immediately. And then from there, that data will be accessible through the reports and extracts. We will generate data discrepancies and anomalies are going to run quickly thereafter it gets into the data store. So it won't be a nightly process. So that's a nice visual. So what does this mean for the LEAs? For one, the special education files will continue to come through the system via the API. However, it's another file type. And so all files will have this rule that either all of the records in the file pass then we will post, but if one record is generating an error, the whole file will be rejected. So that goes for the special ed files, the SPED and the SSRV. Even though it's coming through the API, the system will, you know, tell you in the file view submission part whether it passed or failed. Um, so just be aware of that. And so when the data gets into CalPads with those minimal amount of 
validations, the data discrepancy has to run to see uh, and to inform you if there's additional discrepancies with the data that made it into the ODS. So that means that you have, instead of doing a lot of work before the data gets into CalPADS, some will get in and then you have to do additional work now that it's in CalPADS to resolve those data discrepancies. We provided the vendors, the SIS vendors, and the said vendors, the CFS to point out what are the IVRs that will continue to happen on input and that could potentially cause the file to reject. So we're hoping that many of them have, uh, most of them have implemented some local file validations so that it minimizes your experience of having your file reject because there are some really basic validations. Also what this means to you is that working with your SIS vendors and, and tightening up those validations is going to be really critical because I think it will be very frustrating if, you know, one thing didn't get caught in the local system and that file went up and it failed the whole thing and you got to go back and fix it. And so it's nicer to catch it first before it causes you to cause the whole file to reject. And then another big thing that you will be impacted by is the SSID process. So real quickly, the summary is the file submission screen allows you to upload multiple files, not just one at a time, that you can stage five files if you wanted to, and it will allow those files to come in all at once. Again, that if you have one or more errors, the whole file is going to be rejected, and that something we didn't mention, but you know, we used to have the process of if you sent up an SSID that had since been retired, we would replace it in the file and go on our merry way and report back to you. You would get a message. And so we are going to continue to do that, although you won't get necessarily a message that we did replace a retired SSID. So then you have to adjust your practices in, in dealing with the mid anomalies and checking for uh, retired SSIDs. Files that pass automatically post. We remove the archive file functionality, no more partial post. And then after the data gets in, you got to check it through the data discrepancy. So here's another sample of the workflow. And what you see differently here is that pass or fail. And if it fails, one record fails, the whole thing's rejected and you got to go back again and take care of that and let it come back in. If it comes in and the file has no errors to cause it to reject, it automatically posts. And then there's the data discrepancies that are going to run and you're going to see errors or potential data that you need to fix, go back to the SIS, send it through, et cetera. So this is just to say that, you know, the data discrepancies is another process out here, um, and it's after your data gets posted, but you're going to want to go back to your SIS and fix data. So data gets posted, and then when we're in a submission, the certification process is the same, right? We're going to have a window. We're going to run snapshots, certification validation run at that time, and you're going to be expected to clear all of your fatals. When we cover the data discrepancies functionality, some of these data discrepancies, if they are not resolved, will continue on and become a certification validation error. So this is that one feature where we're trying to give you ahead of time before a submission starts, the visibility of errors in the ODS prior to the submission that you can potentially work on so that when you get to a submission, that you had advance notice of those fatal errors and get a jump start on fixing that. And then you get certification reports the same, and then you have the approval. So we just wanted to let you know that that part of the system didn't change. It's all on that the file submission aspect of things. Online maintenance. So the highlights there is the validate button was removed. Post button validates first, and then it posts. Uh, it's not instantly posted. You got to go look in the file submission to see its status. And then the nuance of you can't just edit the primary keys anymore in online maintenance, that you're going to have to either do it through batch or you have to delete that record and then manually re-add it. So it kind of pushes you towards doing it in your SIS and send up a batch record.
So SSID requests, here are some highlights that we have mentioned even in the quarterlies and um, at the COEs that uh, the rule now that they're automatically assigned a new SSID unless that local ID at that LEA can be found in the ODS database. Typically, you guys would already have that SSID, so you wouldn't be leaving it blank, but that's that nuance. The SCNR file will post automatically. So if you have some blank SSIDs in the SCNR file and there are no uh, records that reject that file, it's going to automatically post and issue a new ID for those blanks. So be careful. Manual selection of potential matches is removed. You no longer um, have that activity. You're kind of going to be moving your work into the mid resolution piece because that's where we'll show you possible mids and then you choose which is the right one. So when it comes time for you guys to actually test this and think about how it's going to change your local um, practices that we see potentially that you're going to want to be sure that you resolve your mids before you pull down the correct SSID for that student. And then likely you're going to want to have small batches so that you can get done each day so that whatever we use that night in our matching or sending over to Tom's, we have the correct SSID. So you don't want uh, obtaining SSIDs to last for days is where we're going with that. So the mid anomaly, that's gonna be changed a little bit as well. The matching is gonna be based on exact first and last name and the date of birth. Before it used to do the same kind of matching that the candidate list would be based on, but it's going to be done on first name, last name, and date of birth. Nice feature that you're going to see when we demo it for you. You'll see that we've uh, added on the UI screen that we're going to display the parent guardian information if there's a SIMF record. So if you have a brand new SSID, you've not submitted a SIMF record, so that parent guardian ID is going to be blank. But if the kid has one, it will display on the mid screen. And it will run every time the student data is posted to the ODS. And it's in the same section of the nav bar where we had online maintenance and there was anomaly detection. And then the last feature that we just wanted you to be aware of what this functionality will do. This is where the old input validations that are no longer running at input, we still want them, but they're going to happen during the data discrepancy aspect of things. So after the data gets into the ODS, many of those validations that no longer run on input are going to run on the data now that it's in the ODS. And so anytime that you post data, the data discrepancy validations, they're going to be running and they'll report out to you. And it's kind of like, you know, the anomalies is that if it was previously a warning, it will be a discrepancy, but maybe your data is accurate. And so you're going to realize, okay, I don't have to fix this. But typically, if it was a fatal on input, it's likely to turn into a CVR eventually if you don't fix it in the data discrepancy. Similar design to the view submission status, and it has its own place on the menu. So something to think about in your local practices that maybe you don't want to send up blank SSIDs. And so you may want to think about what your SIS vendor offers you that I think many SISs, they allowed you to generate an extract on any student that didn't have an SSID and that you had all of them in one file. So what we're saying is that if they were previously enrolled in another district and they are transferring to you, that you may want to look them up first in OM. And I know that's a one by one, but you got to weigh that trade off of all of those kids are going to get a brand new SSID and you're eventually going to have to resolve them in mid. So, you know, sooner or later, you have to be sure you have the right SSID. And so, in regards to those SSIDs, we're thinking people may want to work with smaller files so that you can get it done in the same day. The fact that we're going to have automatic posting, you're going to find that you can get data faster into CalPads if you have cleaner data locally. You will have a smaller uh, set of data discrepancies if you have cleaner data locally. So it's going to be incumbent on the LEAs to think about 
how can you minimize those data discrepancies or those file rejections in improving the local data? Reducing your data discrepancy results are going to allow for higher accuracy on the reports. And that, you know, with this change, you guys are likely to have to rework some and procedures and some governance around that because potentially bad data is getting into CalPads and if you take no action, either it's not going to be used or bad data is going to be used on the report. So you want to think about how you can get others in the organization to take action on this data and make it a higher priority. Retrieving the SSIDs from CalPads may require changes. Mid anomalies may increase because we're issuing brand new IDs to every student unless we can find those matches. And I already mentioned that the data discrepancies can impact the snapshot aggregates, meaning you don't have high quality data on your reports. So with that, please visit the CSIS YouTube channel to hear more about the specific features. Thank you.